So you've experienced a lot of cash flowing in and out of your life over the course of your entrepreneurial journey. Yes, it's true. It's one thing to make money. It's another thing to keep money. That's true. How do you go about doing that? Yeah, so so basically, I, I was like, uh, early on in my entrepreneurship journey, I was kind of just like crazy. I did whatever it took to make as much money as possible. Um, and it didn't matter how it came in. Um, and then I started realizing as I matured in my entrepreneurship journey and making business that there's different types of wealth. So I pillar uh, my wealth off of three variables coming from the Bible in Genesis on Abraham. Basically, it talks about Number one, getting your personal finances in order. So having your bills paid without you having to think about it too much, security, right? So for example, back in the day, I would make like a hundred grand off of trading, but I had, I had no security. It was like very volatile income. Like one month I'd be like rich and then the other month I'd be very you know, cash poor. And uh, I was making decisions as if I was rich and the liabilities were pi like piling up. So this system really saved me. So that's the first thing is uh, definitely having your personal stuff handled and it's very safe, right? And then, which brings me to the second step, which is having spendable money. Mm. So a lot of people, they're like, oh, I'm doing good. I talk to a lot of people because I, I try to help people financially as well that, that you know, are not as fortunate. And a lot of them say, like, my, my bills are handled. But then they only have $150 left over after their bills. And I'm like... Is it really handled? Like you have no savings. If there's one thing that happened to you in life, you would basically have to ask somebody else for money or take out a loan and take out debt. So having spendable money is very important. I believe you shouldn't live your life like a monk in a cave. <laughs> like I think you should go and get some dinner, right? <laughs> I think that's okay. I think it's okay to go watch a movie, right? Yeah, yeah. I think it's okay to take a little vacation, maybe one or two vacations a year. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think there's a nice balance to life and I think we should all be on this earth to be happy. So the spendable money allows you to do that. And um, at that point, you widen the gap as big as you possibly can to where your income is very high, but your expenses are very low. Mm. And at that point, you start investing. That's the third part of the wealth um, where you actually multiply your money. So there's kind of like two types. There's cash flow, which is the flow of money that comes into your bank account. Usually that's safer, but you don't really get too much of a big win. Sometimes mm. you do. Like if your business you know, explodes, yeah, you get that big win, but usually the cash flow is consistent and safe. And then you have the multiplication of money, which is where you get the big wins, but it's not as consistent. And I believe if you want to truly become financially independent, you need both of those variables. Mm. And you can only do the third step, the investment step, if you've done steps one and two. <laughs> That's what I believe. I believe it's a three-phase system. I believe like you suck as an investor if you are emotionally unstable because you can't pay your rent. Right. It's true. That, that was me. I was that guy. I had 100000 in crypto, but my rent was actually questionable. Mm -hmm. And I had to sell my assets earlier at a loss just to pay rent. Right. So you're actually a way better investor if you have cash flow. So if we take that as a three-act structure, right, for the rest of the conversation. Yeah. Because lots of people listening, they're at different points. Maybe someone listening, they're actually at that first level where they're not safe. Yeah. So how did you get safe? And what advice do you give to people who also want to get safe? Yeah, so, so at that level, you kind of have to lower your pride. Um, there, it's like very easy to get safe. It's very easy. So for example, first step, get a job, mm -hmm. right? If you don't have a job, like you can't provide for your family. Like it's as simple as that. It's like the basic 101. It says it in the Bible. We all feel it in our body. Like if you're a man, you provide for your family, right? It's just common sense. You need to work right? That's the first thing. Once you get a job, if you're not making enough money, you can do two things. You can get a flexible second job, Uber Eats, Postmates. I mean, it's all over. There was a guy I was talking to, he didn't even have a car. I don't have a car. I'm like, okay, do you know there's programs you can sign up for where they'll give you an electric bike and they'll pay you to go deliver pizza? Like it's impossible to like be broke nowadays. Like, come on, right? It's really you. Broke is a mindset. So work two jobs till you can get a higher paying job. Mm -hmm. And then once you have this higher paying job, that's when you start figuring out, okay, like how do I make like a side hustle out of it or something like that? That's what I recommend. And for you, how did you go from unsafe to safe? Oh, for me, yeah. So, man, I, I, I tried to make businesses and I got humbled. Um, I, I failed at all of my businesses. I didn't follow this program. And then I eventually got a sales job and my sales job paid a lot. I got like, at the time, I think I was like 23 and um, I did like, like 10K my first month, 
To me, that's a lot at the time. And yeah, that's how I did it, is I worked a job specifically that, that paid you based off performance. Mm. A performance-based job, which is a very good um, transition into entrepreneurship. A performance-based job is basically like training wheels for entrepreneurship. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. So if you're an executive or you're trying to be an executive, that's like kind of performance-based. You can be paid off bonuses or commission. Mm. Put your, I recommend if you're getting a job, whoever this is, do that. Yeah, because you're not being paid for your time. You're being paid for your results. Exactly. Very, very good. Do you think entrepreneurs are born? Like, would you say you were born an entrepreneur? Personally, look, we live in a society now where there's something called the nine to five. Mm -hmm. But I believe the economy would work way better if we were all entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. if we all had, had our own little thing. I, you know, I don't have the answers for the world, but I do believe, I don't believe it's, we're born an entrepreneur. I believe everybody to a certain extent has creativity. Mm -hmm. They can build and they should be able to monetize it. And it's as simple as that. Yeah. Um, and I believe also in crypto, which allows that to happen on the internet. It's a long story, but we're basically getting to a point as a human species to where you can now create value in a digital way and you actually own the rights to it. So the only way to do this before is to create a physical, in physical reality thing, mm -hmm. right? And then you actually have it in your hand, so you, you hold it and it has value because it's in your hand. But if I make an Instagram post that gets 100,000 views, I don't own it. Right. The, the, the centralized corporations own it. So in the future, which is very, very close, we're gonna to get to a point where you can monetize everything, which brings me back to the original subject. Do you believe everyone should be an entrepreneur? Yes. I just don't think our economy and our systems and structures are built to be able to accommodate that. Right, so you were flipping phones for a while. Yes. You were doing the eBay stuff. Yes. You were selling drugs for a bit. Yes. And then you launched multiple businesses and then you had a whole massive Ethereum run. Yes. Can you share a little bit about that initial run? Yeah, so here's the exact story. So I was working at a sales job. My friend's like, he calls me, he's like, look, there's this thing called Ethereum, and I knew about it. I've known about it a, a while. Like, I've known about crypto for a while. Um, and he's like, I just turned like $1,000 into like 20 grand, and he's freaking out, and he's one of my good friends at the time. And I'm like, this, I remember this exact phrase. I said, what's the difference between holding my money there and in a, in a bank? Like, what's the difference? And I didn't even understand. That's how uh, naive I was to invest. You didn't have ears to hear. Yeah, I, I, like I didn't even, I was like, I'm just going to put my money in ETH instead of having it in a bank. Right. And I just didn't, it didn't comprehend that it can go down in value. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I mean, I knew that was, but like, I didn't understand how risky crypto was. Right. Basically. So at the time, I knew I had a lot of cash flow. I was one of the top salespeople in the organization. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to dump my entire bank into Ethereum. Everything. I think I had 7,000 at the time. I called my girlfriend, which is now my wife, and I was like, hey buy $2,000 worth of Ethereum. And then I called my brother and I was like, hey, buy Ethereum. And I called my friend, I'm like, hey, buy Ethereum. This is when it was at $7. And then I went around my office, because you know how it is when new entrepreneurs, they talk too much, right? <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> it's true, bro. Every new entrepreneur- <laughs> Run the mouth. You know oh, why? Man. Do you know why they talk? Well, I do it because I'm excited. That's why I do it. Excitement and also because they don't truly believe in it. They don't? The reason why new entrepreneurs talk a lot is because they're trying to convince themselves through other people. Yeah, you're selling yourself. You're selling yourself to yourself. Yeah. It's, it's actually an insecurity, I believe. Yeah, well, I, I agree with that. Yeah. But I also think that there's an element of, you have to test things out. It's true. You know? There's a little bit of both. But usually you notice like the, the, the biggest entrepreneurs, they're, they're, they'll talk about it, but it's... it's... Well, I, I, knew, I knew like the more successful a endeavor becomes, Yeah. I... I just start saying basically nothing about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that, to your point, then, yeah, it's true. Yeah, we all mature. But yeah, I went around the office and I was like, hey, um, hey, there's this thing I'm going to buy. Um, and, and then they all started looking at me crazy. Why were you so evangelistic about Ethereum? I was, bro, to be honest with you, I just tell everybody about everything. Okay. Like, <laughs> it's just the personality. <laughs> I'm just like, yo, hey, there's this thing I'm buying and everybody needs to listen to me now, basically, <laughs> as much as I possibly can. And they all looked at me crazy, and they thought I was crazy, and they thought I was wrong. Um, and but the entire time they kind of knew I was in crypto because that that entire season I was actually mining Ethereum. So while I was working that job, I knew about Ethereum, but I just never thought about investing. I just made the miner, mm. and I was mining one Ethereum a day, which is crazy. Um, and so yeah, I just told the whole office I'm buying this thing, and literally 24 hours later, it like quadrupled. 
like 24 hours later. What was that? Was that JP Morgan or somebody? Jumped yes. In? JP. How do you remember this stuff? You I just, so, it's my brand. <laughs> you do so many interviews. Yes. JP Morgan, um, which is obviously one of the biggest banks in the world, partnered with the Ethereum Alliance, which is an organization basically built to right. ensure the success of Ethereum. So it was like a big thing. So you literally, like, we talk about like right timing. Yes. You got in the day before. Or the day before. Uh, actually, the day before? The day before. The day before. Dude. The day before. And JP Morgan put... Yes. Wow. And it went crazy. And then I went and told everybody in the office, and then they got weird on me again. What did it go to? 24? <laughs> it went from, I believe, around 7 to $10 to about $40. $40. Like, like overnight. Yeah. Like overnight. And so I'm sitting here like, this is... What am I... Why am I selling? <laughs> You're like, I'm a crypto genius. Yeah. I am an entrepreneur, a <laughs> full-blown business guy. I'm going to take over the world. <laughs> That's basically it. Pride. So, so your your initial massive early win, yeah, kind of like set you up for failure. Basically, that's crazy. It's crazy because that's what we all want. It's true. Or that's what that's what in the culture we chase. That's the dream. Is to do things the easy way, get big results without having to put in effort. Basically. What's the correlation between your experience and what happens to most lottery winners? It's probably the same exact thing, hmm. except for they make more money because they're making millions if they win the lottery. Sure. In my case, it's actually worse. But they still lose it all. Well, there's a certain percentage that will lose everything. Yeah, there's a lot of people, like a lot, a high percentage from yeah. what I've heard. I, I think the difference is, is that I thought I was doing something. Right. I thought that the effort that I put in was actually smart. You were killing it in your head. I was like, yo, I'm the man. Like, I know what I, like, I'm, I'm a genius. You're all, you know, I'm not as smart as me, basically. And then what, and the reality was? The reality was I listened to my friend's advice. Um, and uh, it was, I, I don't believe in luck. I believe it was, it was God ordained. Mm -hmm. um, but it was like a very big, humbling experience. I think, look, you could call it a failure all you want. Like, I did lose all of my money. But the experience I learned in that first bull cycle is invaluable. Mm -hmm. I was full-time crypto for a long time. I've been full-time crypto for a long time, a long time. Not many people can say that because of this new market, this brand new market. Not, I would say the vast majority of people are not full-time crypto. Mm -hmm. So the amount of experience I gained is crazy. It's, 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 it's crazy. And it's paying in perpetuity. Right now, it's paying. Everything I learned that first cycle, all the money I lost, all the emotional control that I had to develop, you know, all of the experience I've had with the people, you know, all of that is way more valuable to any than any seven to forty dollar price increase. Sure. And I'm and I, it's, it's cor like okay, I'm not the corny internet guy. <laughs> Motivational talk about <laughs> experience. And, no, bro, like for real, it's real. Like it's seriously, actually real. That it, and I, I'm the perfect human embodiment of skills pay more than anything else. Right. I've lost my wealth two different times and I was able to get it back predictably, predictably mm -hmm. because of my skill set. So that first bull run still in the unsafe. Like talk to me about that. Like how did you lose your money? I actually don't even know the answer to that. Very simple, straight, uh, straightforward. I, I um, held Ethereum and I tried a whole bunch of ventures. I went into one Ponzi scheme that ended up being like one of the biggest Ponzi schemes, BitConnect. It was huge. It's like a meme in the crypto community. Um, lost some money there. Um, and then I like just did a whole bunch of random crypto degen stuff. Degen is like degenerate. Like, okay. <laughs> it's like a, it's like a, a crypto term. Um, like basically gambling, right. like going to this ga like scam with no systems, no, no, like investing, um, like checklists, nothing. Mm -hmm. I was just kind of going with the hype everywhere for like two years. But do you think you got the Midas touch because you got that initial win? Yeah. Uh, I thought I was, I don't know. I just thought I knew more. Okay. Because I was in crypto a long time. Like uh, my initial venture into crypto was actually in high school. I built like a, a research paper for my dad, a business plan. And I was like, hey, let's buy a Bitcoin miner. I did the math one time. And if, if he said yes, I would be worth like 500 million. <laughs> but obviously, you know, like... I'm not spending $5,000 in a machine from China and then turning my garage into a, you know, like, yeah, 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 he yeah. was like, no, but I did research a lot of crypto. So I thought that that background knowledge was going to help me in this investing, mm -hmm. but it's completely different. So that first bull run, you made a lot of money. You lost a lot of money. You had a season of pride and then you were humbled. 
Yes. How do you make the tra- how did you personally make that transition from that emotional unsafe to something more safe and predictable? I became an actual investor. Mm-hmm. So you can, I was talking to my wife about this. You can gamble at anything, right? Like no matter, there's a difference between someone that knows something and that doesn't, mm-hmm. right? So even if I go to the casino, there's some people that are very good mm-hmm. at poker yeah, and they're not gambling and it's very systematized. They're going based off statistics and it's very predictable. They're not gambling. So I came to a point where I had to make systems. Mm-hmm. I had to make, like I have a checklist. I had to ha- like just follow a rule book. And that came through me trying something, failing, looking at, the, looking at the result, optimizing, and just repeatedly doing that over. And it's the same thing as a business. It's literally the same thing. And um, yeah, that's when I became an actual investor, when it, I became predictable and I had a system with proven results. And your cash flow, how did you get steady with your cash flow? That came from telling other people about the system. Mm-hmm. So once I, I became predictable in my investing and I actually got good at investing, I started telling people. So it started off for free. Mm-hmm. Like my friends would call me, hey, how do I buy this thing? And I was like, you buy it here. And then I had to tell my other friend. And then I told my other friend, I'm like, this is annoying. <laughs> I'm making a video, right? <laughs> That's literally how it started. And um, I made a video. And then the video got a little bit of views. And then I started like, oh, I want to be a marketer. Like I want to I mm-hmm. make more videos. And I started making more videos. Um, and yeah, I started building from there, basically. So you actually start to professionalize the thing that you always did, which yeah. is you love telling people about things? Basically. Cool. That, that, that's why I love, okay, this is, why, this is how I look at marketing. You, know, you guys know that popular guy in your high school yeah. that was like always like the hustler? Yeah, I was Mark. That was him. That was him behind the camera. <laughs> well, that's basically what I'm doing on the internet. I don't believe it. Like marketing is a, a phrase. Like I get it, but really, it's like what's effective communication to massive amounts of people on the interwebs. Mm-hmm. That's basically the gist of what social media is. How can you tell as many people as possible about your thing in a very clear and, com- and, and convincing and you know all the elements of a good conversation, basically, or you know a, a good popular person, mm-hmm. right? Um, so that's what I'm doing on the internet is just communicating what I like. So you make videos for free for your mates. You start getting a few views on YouTube. How does that transform into a steady cash flow? I made a course. So at first I was generating YouTube ad revenue Mm -hmm. and that's what started everything is, is I was paying my bills. I had very little liabilities. Um, and I was, I was making like three to five K a month off of YouTube ad revenue. And so at that point I was like, okay, I know the course thing is kind of the way a lot of people go, and I bought an Alex Becker course. Yeah, nice. like yeah, his course was amazing. It was five thousand at the at the time. You know, that was a lot of money to me at the time, and I said I'm just going to go for it, and I'm not going to stop until this course is is completed. I do the entire course, and that's a big thing about courses. Um, there's a difference between people that just consume the information and actually apply it. Right. So I was watching the videos over and over, and I sat there for like a month and a half straight, nonstop. Um, and I completed my own course because his course was basically how to build your own course and then scale it. Mm. So I made my own. And then I remember, I remember I did the launch and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm doing, my system was like, you, you have a, a call with me, a one-on-one call. And I, and I get on the phone with this guy and I'm like, yeah, it's $2,000. And I was like freaking out. I'm like, there's no way, bro. Like, he's not going to pay me $2,000. This is, this is not going to happen. And he's like, okay, where do I send the money? I'm like, <laughs> I start freaking out, right? I'm like, yo, this is crazy. And so I started slamming deals like back and forth <laughs> by myself. I was my own sales guy. And I did 30K my first month, 30K in revenue. And, I, and it was like a life changing experience. It was like, you guys, ever, you guys ever seen the movies where like the guy's rich and he's like walking slow in the scene? That yeah, was, that yeah, was yeah, like yeah, my yeah. scene. Yeah. That was like, Holy, that, like you can make 30K in a month. Like what? It's like a year's salary. And um, from there, I just tried to scale it and do different things and hire people and stuff. Yeah. Mm. That was like the initial start. Cool. Yeah. Any more fall from there? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was thinking I wanted to word that. <laughs> <laughs> a lot, man. I, so like I just, I built it in any which way I thought. I, you know, I didn't have no experience. Sure. So I was just going this way, going that way. I hired this guy for this thing, hired that guy for that thing. Uh, didn't have a hiring system. Didn't know how to hire. I didn't know how to, you know, check credibility, check character. 
Um, I mean, like, I think the average age of my corporation when I had like 40 employees was like 24. 40 employees. I had 40, 40 employees at the peak. I had a team of developers. I had um, like seven coaches. I had like the marketing division was like 10, 15 people. Yeah, and operations. Or I had assistants. It was so dumb, to be honest with you. It was so dumb. But it still generated a lot of money. I was doing like 200K, 150 to 200K a month consistently. And I was spending approximately 100,000 to 150,000 in payroll. So I was doubling. It's not, you know, it's not that bad. Yeah, yeah. But there was a lot of inefficiency. Sam Levin says it all the time. He says, um, you know, a lot of people hire, you know, too many people and then they're spending a lot of time trying to figure out for what those people are going to do. <laughs> that was me. That was me. Yeah. He said at the last mastermind, yeah. he's like, you should hire where it hurts. Yeah. And only hire whenever it's really, really hurting for you not to hire. Yes. And I think his line was like, yeah, I used to just like hire until it hurt. <laughs> That, that's actually very smart. It's very wise. I actually watched like a free video of his or something like that. And um, he, um, he and some other people got me to the point where I started having to let people go. So that was like the second big fall. I started making a lot of cash flow, took that cash flow, dumped it into the market. That multiplied. I was doing crazy stuff. Like I bought a Tesla Model 3 cash from like an Ethereum leverage loan. <laughs> so I bought 300000 worth of Ethereum. I leveraged it in a loan took out 70K, bought the car cash, Ethereum went up to like 700,000 a million dollars and it paid the loan off itself. And so I got, I basically, I always say I bought a Tesla Model 3 with one trade, basically like yeah, 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 crazy yeah. thing. I was doing stuff like that. I was uh, loaning against the, the Ethereum and the crypto to pay payroll, just like crazy stuff, which is actually really cool. And I think it's amazing. Yeah. You should, like, I think people should do this. Uh, like if they know how and they have the expertise, like, you could keep the crypto asset, get the appreciation and percentages, and then also pay your payroll instead of, because you lose so much cash paying your payroll. Mm -hmm. You could actually invest and do it white, right if you know what you're doing. But I was doing things like that. And I had a lot of employees and it came to a point where the market started falling. Crypto started coming down. It started decreasing in popularity. Less people started buying my stuff. And I had to start firing people and letting go. And that was one of the craziest moments of my life. Like it was painful. These people I was in the trenches with. I mean, some of these people come to four o'clock in the morning consistently every day and work with me. And like it was like a it was like um it was like a small small army. And I had to fire and let go of a lot of people. It was very scary. Mm. It was very, 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 very scary. Um, but I did it. And um, yeah, ultimately led me to where I'm at now. So what was the that was that the bottom? Yeah, so the bottom was me letting go of a lot of people. Then I got it down to a core group of people. Like how many? Like four. Nice. But like they were like the best, highest functioning people yeah, yeah, yeah. that were actually like probably like supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. And then um So you went it, from forty to four? Yeah, four on rail. It, it was like seven to four, but like it got like the bottom was like four. Yeah. And then at that point I had to let go of all of them. Like there was a point where I, I went down to zero. Wow. So a lot of people don't know this. Look, I, I'm a spiritual dude. So it says in the Bible, with great pride comes a great fall. Mm -hmm. So I don't believe my business was supposed to go that low. But I do believe God was testing me. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a moment in the Bible where Abraham got tested by, you know, God told him to kill his son. And he went to go kill his son. And before he killed his son, uh, God stopped him and told him, go sacrifice that. Uh, I think it was a, a ram instead. And I came to that moment. I don't believe I would have got to that moment if I was in the world and I wasn't saved. Mm. I believe in that moment, God tested me and said, will you sacrifice your business for me? Mm -hmm. And I did get to that moment. I did get to the moment where I said, I'm going to go get a job. I cannot pay my bills and my family is struggling and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get evicted. Do I got to that yet? moment. I had, I had two kids at that moment. So I have two kids and my wife and I'm like, yo, I can't pay rent. There's seven days left and I need to make $7,000. So my, my liabilities were very high. Mm -hmm. because, and I, I already sold my Tesla Model 3. I sold my Tesla Model I started selling things in my house. It was that low. Right. I was selling everything. Um, but from an identity perspective, it's very, very... I think, for, just I'm projecting myself here, I think it's very, very hard for you to say, yeah, I'm going to get a job. Yes. Because everything that that implies... 
Yes. You're walking away from a lot there. You have to, you have to die. Yeah. You have to die as a person. And, and that, but that's like why I think God did it. Like once, once I realized that like my identity wasn't in me owning a business or me making money or any of that, and my identity is in Christ, once I completely let go of all of it, like for real, that same day. So I'm, I'm going to give you the story. This, this is a crazy story. I'm sitting in my room. I'll say this. I don't care. I was crying uncontrollably, like a baby, like the deep ones, like the ones where you're in your room and your mom, like just like you're, something happened and you're like crying the sob, yeah. as a 28 year old dude crying sure. uncontrollably. I call, I call my pastor, which is actually my blood brother. And he's like, look, Alex, like you got to get a job. There's nothing you can do. And I'm, I'm like, you're right. Like, I'm not even mad at you. Like, you're right. Like, I got to get a job. I have to make money. And I'm sitting there and I go make my resume and I'm crying the entire time. Like, I'm crying, bro. And I'm making my resume and I'm putting the, the, the experience and I realize that I haven't worked a job in like five years. <laughs> You're so unemployed. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. <laughs> like, this is wild. And I'm, I'm sending my applications in and I'm like, and I got, I'm like, look, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm about to go get a job. I'm going to do it like aggressively, right? I'm going to get a job and I'm going to pay the rent. So I put a suit on. And I, and I go and I start literally door knocking for a job. Unreal. I went to businesses and I started door knocking. I started going and I started telling people about like what I'm doing. I need to get a job. I want to be an executive, things like that. And then I, I got shifted, came back at noon. I came back home at 1 p.m. I remember this like it was yesterday. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, God, what's, like, what's going on? This is crazy. Like, this is, this is crazy. And um, I got to the lowest moment at, where I had the death in my mind. And... Um, I just had this feeling and, and I know now it's the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. And he told me, he said, go make a video. I'm like, what? <laughs> he's like, go make a video. And I'm like, what? I, it's like, is this real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, this can't be real. And I got this, this is, this is what a lot of people don't understand. The Holy Spirit, like God controls everything. And I got this motivation and this confidence I have never felt in my entire existence. So I'm going from on the four floor, on my face, crying like a little baby, to now being extremely confident and just, I'm ready to take on the world. I make a video. The video, does, it doesn't go viral, but it does good enough where I generate $10,000 in like four days. What? I'm serious. This is all, I have the proof. I'll show you guys the video on YouTube. I will show you my bank statements in that moment. Like I have no problem. Like I'm, I'm not a liar. Like this happened. I know for a fact. And um, it's because I sac like it says in the Bible, Abraham sacrificed. He was about to do it. And he went like this with a dagger, about to kill his son. Angel stopped his arm and told him, go sacrifice that instead. And then God multiplied Abraham a hundred times. And basically right then and there, I was financially stable. And now my business generates more money with less, not more money, but like about the same with less employees. Like I don't spend, I don't have any expenses basically. It's crazy. From when you had the 40 person massive behemoth? Yes. So I, did, so I, I basically time in crypto works by the Bitcoin halvings, that's like time. And at this moment, last cycle, based off of the Bitcoin halving, mm -hmm. I was making probably like five to 7K a month. Now I'm doing 80,000 a month. and And it's like, I see where the 100x is. Like I know it. Like I know I'm in 100x compared to last cycle. I know for a fact. So your monthly expenses at that point were what, like seven grand? My monthly and, expenses. And you made and you made ten grand in that one video. Yeah. So no, my monthly expenses at that time was like sixteen grand a month. Right. And um, my wife had a job, and she was pulling in. She's a nurse practitioner. She was pulling in like five, six k a month. Yeah. So, so it just, you just made it? Yeah. Like basically, like I had like a couple hundred left over. That's insane. Yeah. And, 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 and the timing was great because it was only a week to make, to pay rent. Yeah. 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 It was only a week to pay rent. <sighs> yeah. It, it, that's, like this is undeniable. So there's certain things where like, I get it, bro. Like I was that guy. I was like, look, God's not real. There's no way. So I'm not even that. I'm more so just like how, cause I've been in those situations Yeah. and how you feel and in those moments before the breakthrough comes yeah. it's a scary place oh when i mean yeah it was like a lot of crying bro a lot of uh breaking a lot of um so what darkness. It, did you say that when when you were talking about going and knocking on the doors did you say you got sifted is that what you said 
Oh no, I don't. I don't know what you're referring to, but I did get denied a lot. Right. Like I went to the doors, and and they were just like, "Look, we're not interested." So what died for you in that moment that you think was the thing you needed to leave behind to take you to the next level you're at now? Hmm. Good question. What died in that moment? I like I said, I just think my attachment to everything. Mm. I think my attachment to everything is what died. That is the best answer I can give you. I do not. I gen- look, look. It's great. I'm making a lot of money. Mm. I get it. Mm. But if I lost it all, like I genuinely would not care. Like I know I won't. Like yeah. I, I know because I I went there. It's like, can you lift two hundred twenty five pounds? Yes. Why? Because you did it. But if you've never did it, can, do you do you really know you can? Mm. You don't. But like some people say they're not attached to money. They say they're not attached to their business. But do you really know that? Do you have a like a, a hundred percent confidence knowing? Some people think that the meaning of life is work. Some people think that building is the meaning of life, but what if they take that away for you? What happens when they take away your meaning of life? Where do you go? That's a big question for a lot of people, and it would drive them insane. Man, there's a quote in June too. <laughs> Mark's <laughs> going to laugh. I'm quoting this, uh, where he says, "The person who has the power to destroy a thing has the true power over it." There it is. And it's interesting that you know, if your business has the power to destroy you, then it has the power over you. So if it can destroy your identity, destroy your self-worth. Yes. Very interesting. Yes. You can, I believe the, the meaning of life is God, of course, but he gives you a purpose and you're supposed to build the business and you're supposed to make a lot of money and those things are supposed to happen, but you cannot identify with it. You can't. So in one sentence, what is your purpose? My purpose of life is to build things on the internet Here's the real purpose. The real purpose is to bring as many people to Christ as possible, doing it through kingdom finance. And I believe the way it's going to happen is through internet infrastructure, mm-hmm. building internet infrastructure. And the, like I'm a futurist, if that makes sense. So what do you mean by futurist and why, why are you doing crypto now? I adopt future technologies before other people do. Mm-hmm. There is such thing scientifically as a first mover advantage. Mm-hmm. It is real. Yes, there's businesses that I'm just going to make a business that's you know currently working like like, you know, just competing. Those businesses are probably safer, safer, but there is such thing. There's scientific evidence. There's a scientific peer review uh, paper uh, that you guys can look into. Mm-hmm. If you look at networking systems and, and telephone systems, the basically the telephone networks that were adopted first in a country actually have a significant advantage and basically like monopoly. Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing with online infrastructure. It's basically very similar. So I adopt future technologies, which I believe will pivot me and, and at an advantage, a huge advantage as a futurist. Um, and then I, I, like I'm basically creating sustainable biz- businesses, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. So talk to me about the third step now where, so you were unsafe, you became safe. Mm-hmm. You didn't have spendable money, then you had spendable money. Yes. This bridge between number two and number three, which is where you have enough income and cash to start investing without being emotionally attached. Yes. How I want to get into that is, how have you built a business that is doing at the same level without 40 people working for you? Like what are the tools, the systems, whether they're actual bits of software that you use or mindset things? How have you done that? Man, okay, so like right now, mentors, yeah. people that know more than me, yeah. has helped me a lot. Uh, school, like we've talked about this and there's other softwares that have been very pivotal, like Loom, um, Notion. There's been softwares that are very big Figma. Mm-hmm. These softwares have been really good. So just adopting superior systems. So like the knowledge has increased in value, not more knowledge, but like I'm listening to smarter people. Right. Then I adopt a better tool set mm-hmm. and then I have the experience. And I believe all of those have contributed to me being able to make what way more with way less in the same amount of time. So everything's leveled up? I believe everything. Like when it comes to me coaching and then also marketing Mm -hmm. and then also investing, I believe I'm way better than I will ever have been ever, ever, for sure, by far. And I think it's a quantum leap. Ooh. Yeah. Quantum leap? I don't think it's a small leap. I don't think I like doubled in experience. I think I like 10 x And I think, I think that's, I can't prove this. No one can prove this. But I believe that winners win more. 
they win a lot more. And it's in it because like because the investing and the cash flow, I, I basically do it in the same niche, the same exact niche. So the same experience that I'm learning with investing compounds to, to the experience of the cash flow. If I learn marketing to a high level in crypto, that's the same system for fundamental analysis right. and identifying the marketing of a project. So I've been literally doing this one skill set for an extreme amount of, of time, and it's been compounding for so long, and that's what I mean by multiple. I believe there's like this multiple effect that you get once you, once you get to the point where you're spending all of your time on one like serious skill set, if that mm. makes sense. I think one of my favorite things about business is the fact that you can pick a niche, and it doesn't matter what the niche is. Yeah. And if you go super hard into it and learn all the lessons and the ups and the downs and everything, you actually just get better at the game of business itself. Yes. And once you get better at the game of business itself, then you can almost do anything. <laughs> it's really true, though. Yeah, I could, I could start a clothing brand right now if I wanted to. I don't want to, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how did you come across school? Okay, yeah. So Sam Ovens put out, like, this video, like, no promotion. It wasn't even a paid advertising campaign, I think. He just put it on his, like, YouTube. And I saw it, and I was like, this is really cool. And I'm like, I'm going to go um, look into that. And I did, and I remember at the time, this, this, uh, the first time was actually when I had a lot of employees. And so I was like, hey, look, I wanna increase the efficiency of my business. I wanna get more results from my customers, which will make me more money. Um, and that came into the picture. We did this whole brainstorm session, pros and cons. We ended up not adopting it because they, you know, their cons out there. I wanted to do it, but everybody else didn't. I think it was primarily because they were being lazy. <laughs> To be honest, I'm going to be honest. They just didn't want to build it. They didn't want to like transfer everything over. <laughs> That's why you, you have to be around people that want to win mm. like a lot because like they'll bring you down. I'm not saying those people brought me down, but I would say that that decision should have gone the other way. Right. Um, so I didn't do it. And then I got humbled, lost all, a lot of my employees. And at the bottom, I basically made the decision to do the transfer. And yeah, it was um, when Sam Ovens said that he was going to come out with the app, like when he verbally was like, hey... Uh, the apps are coming out, and then he came out with the payment processor system. Once he kind of did those two things, I was like, okay, it's green light. We're good to go. Because that solved so many problems in, like, in my coaching business. It solved a lot of problems, and I ended up making – it was, like, the best decision. I told somebody the other day, I was like, he's, he's doing day trading. And he's like, oh, man, should I go to school? Everybody, all the day traders are in Discord. And I'm like, bro. I just said, I said this simple. I said, school was the best operational decision I've ever made in my life. I just said it like that. And he's like – he looked at me crazy, but it's really true. It's the best operational decision I've made in coaching right now. And coaching is the majority of my business and stuff. Mm. So for sure, yeah, it's one of the best for sure. I could probably say number one. And I'm not exaggerating either. It's mm. like really good. It's really, really good. And it's the fact that they have built systems that does the work of what full-time people used to do. Exactly. And because there's nothing else that just accommodates coaching like Sam Ovens knows it, mm. like he's built coaching businesses. He knows it, so he gives you what you need. He gives you exactly what you need and nothing more. Um, and it's almost like, it's weird to say, but it's almost like a form of him coaching us through the building of the software. Right. Right? It's so true. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, man. It's weird. Because what you just said there, and nothing more. Yes, which it, is important. Th you know, it's, n it's not more than you need because if it was more than what you need, then you would just... Yeah. Yeah, because like if you give us like options, we're going to take them. <laughs> but if you give us no options, we're just going to take what we have. But if the no, op like if it's just one and it's the right answer, it's like a coaching through the software. This is, and it's so beautiful because this is like what crypto is too. Like it, the crypto is like that. Mm. It's very, it's very, it's like uh, software is the future, man. It really is. We're going into the metaverse, guys. If you're not on the internet, like what are you doing? Like <laughs> we're going into the, like eventually we're going to get to the point where we have avatars and, you know, um, and, and physical items on the internet, like your couch will like be in VR and it will actually be worth money. And um, there's going to be people that are builders that are building infrastructure on the internet that guides you. And that's what Sam Ovis is doing, basically. He's, he's guiding us as business owners through the software and what we should be doing and things like that. So it's just, I don't know. I love software, bro. I love the, I love the future and I love what the human species is coming to. Yeah. And I want to learn it all. I yeah. really do. So you, you, you're clearly a builder and you have been throughout your whole life. You then got clear on you want to build things on the internet. Yeah, specifically, I, I believe that's the new frontier. Mm -hmm. That's the most obtainable new frontier is, 
It's like, what's going to go on? But like, what, what? look what happened when the internet got adopted. Like, look at how many change, like everything changed. So for example, if the internet went out right now, you can't get groceries. It's not going to work. Oh, but it has nothing to do with the internet. It's a cow. Like, no, it's not. Like, it, you can't go to the grocery store. Their entire supply chains run off the internet. Right. They're not going to be able to get food. Like, everything you do right now relies on the internet, basically. We spend, I would argue, a majority of the time of our life in the metaverse. What do I mean by that? How much hours do you put on your screen? That's basically the metaverse. Sure. That's basically like you're spending your reality on the internet. Look at your screen time. You spend one third of your life where? Sleeping. You spend another third of your life, I believe, in the metaverse. And then like the minority of your life is like not on a screen. If you're working at a job, you're on the internet. Like just think about it, right? It's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. You spend your free time on the internet, Netflix probably, or a video game, right? Just think about that. Like, so we're already in the metaverse. People are scared of it. They're like, oh, I don't want to put the VR headset on. It's like, okay, well, you kind of already do that. Sure. That makes sense. And so what you're saying is, you know, back in the day, let's say like Victorian era, the people who made a lot of money would have been the people that built and owned factories. Yeah. Whereas now you think that it's the digital infrastructure is going to be the future. Yeah, I believe that. I believe... Uh, so how do you break that down for someone who's still in that first step you described where they're unsafe? Like, how can they get access to that and benefit from that without having, like, you know, 10 million to build a piece of software, et cetera, et cetera? I think it all starts with a skill set, right? So, like, you have to be very good at something. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you can know where to monetize it. I believe the coaching industry is the best. Mm -hmm. I think it's really good to, to be able to share accurate information and get paid for it. And school is, like, a really good starting ground. Like, I really do believe that. I'm not just saying that e either. I really believe school is, like, it's unmatched. Mm. Like you could be like, I was talking to one of my uh, trainers and he, he plays a lot of basketball and he's like, he's like a professional and he wants to go pro. And I'm like, bro, make a school community, make a school community charge $20 a month or $50 a month and like do that. And don't take it serious. Like you don't have to, and then go pro. Yeah. Like you'll probably make more money than whatever you're doing. Like, <laughs> seriously, bro. Like it's easy. Like you could start a community in like an hour. Mm -hmm. I really do believe that you don't need to have course videos. You can make, this is what I recommend. You make the course videos based off of what they're asking. So you start your community really with no videos, but you answer questions and you get to the point where you're actually crafting the videos around them. So really you don't need a course to start a school. I didn't start my recent course like that. It had zero videos. Got a whole bunch of people in there and I was like, hey, like let's get started. I'm gonna show you guys how to build your social media. And then I started building the course around them. So yeah, I believe in like an hour's time you can get an entire business started with school. Um, and then if you're serious, I think you could probably get your first 5K in three to six months, mm -hmm. 5K a month. I think you could break your first hundred, I mean, a thousand dollars probably in a month. Mm -hmm. Like if you're actually serious and you actually market. So yeah, that's what I would say. Start with the skill set to answer your original question. Start with, you have to be good at something. Mm -hmm. You have to be good at something. You have to provide value to people in some way, shape, or form. And to provide value, you have to be better than them at it, right? So once you get to that point, then we go to the internet. And the best way right now, I believe in the internet, me included, is school. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you know, you scale. It's a scaling thing. So get involved in something that you can level up your skill set in yes. that brings you cash into the door. Yes. Do your reps. Once you've do, you do your reps, do your reps, do your reps, become significantly better at a skill than somebody else. Now you're in a position where you can start to train other people on how to do that. Correct. And I'm willing, I'm willing to even bet that you could, you could start like, I mean, the th the classic thing is you only ever have to be one step ahead, right? Exactly. <laughs> like it's true though. Like, is it unethical? Like think about this. Is it unethical? If you don't know nothing about a subject, you read 10 books on it. You charge $5 a month. Is that unethical? No. $5 a month. Like how is that unethical? And you, if you want to be super, super watertight, you can offer a refund. Yes, it's not. <laughs> like, I think it's, it's purely fine. You just have to know more than, than they know. Mm. And you have to be able to help them and provide support. But, but like, if it, it's the way you frame it. That's why, like, the coaching industry, like, it looks like a scam a lot of times. Because mm. they're like, you can get rich in, in three days with no experience at all. And then if you don't get rich, then I'm just going to refund you. Like, it's <laughs> stupid stuff like that, right? That's why uh, people even bring the unethical question into consideration because if you buy a book, do you think it's unethical to spend uh, $7 on a book? 
Like it's just information. Right. It's purely information. It's the way they're pitching the coaching, if that makes sense. Interesting. Yeah. So for like you have a very clear future of what you think the future is going to look like. You are a futurist, internet infrastructure, crypto, et cetera, et cetera. I know we've talked before about hedge funds and all this other exciting stuff. Park all that for now. Yes. Like for someone who's watching this and they want to break free from the nine to five or they're in that early stage of the entrepreneurial journey. Mm -hmm. It's the skill. That's the answer. Okay. I can't go. I can't go anywhere else. That is the skill. You have to know something. So let's say or it's very simple. I start from nothing today. I first figure out what direction I want to go. So you figure out, okay, I'm going to play golf. I'm going in that direction. I want to play golf. Once you go in that direction, you figure out where you're going. Then you become really good at it. You become really good at golf. And then at that point, you figure out how to monetize it. Do you want to go pro and monetize it in that way? Or do you want to be a coach and mm. monetize it in that way? And then once you figure that part out, then like kind of the business gets built in that, in that you know, general direction, if that makes sense. Which one of your communities would you recommend people start in? It depends on your income level, but um, CoinPix Army. CoinPix Army is like the, the bare minimum. Honestly, just go on my social media. Just go on my social media. Mm -hmm. I recommend everybody start there. Not my community because that's like my original community is like, you know, the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And then from there, there's so much good free information. You kind of make your own decision. Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. And what type of person do you attract typically? Typically, people that want to become financially independent. Mm -hmm. It's like the make money online, you know, niche. Um, but like people that are more revolutionary. Um, a lot of business owners invest in my products. A lot of business, like people that are already like really entrepreneurial, but they want to learn how to multiply their money. They don't know how to invest mm -hmm. and they have a lot of capital to invest in crypto. So typically those type of people. Cool. Yeah. What social? You could go anywhere. Um, Alex on crypto. Um, my Instagram is Alexander on crypto. That's kind of like my main social right now. Instagram okay. is Alexander on crypto. Yep. Cool. Well, we'll put a link to the Instagram. I love that. Not even, not even to the community, but it's like, go to the top of the top of the top of the funnel. <laughs> I, don't, I really don't care, bro. <laughs> like at this game, like at this point, like I said, like, um, I believe the biggest multi like money making is, is me investing. Mm. I really do. I really do believe that the cash flow is amazing and it's, it's very pivotal. Um, but like, if you make money off of like what I say on YouTube, the chances of you wanting to invest in what I'm doing right. increases substantially. I don't want people buying my stuff unless they're, if you're making money by my stuff, like I want results. Like that's all I care about. Yeah. I genuinely believe in that. Like I genuinely believe that it's the results that matter. It really matters, bro. Like I don't like scamming people. Like, like I don't like selling something where people don't, they can't afford it. Like it's so dumb. Mm. I used to be that guy, and it's a really good business model too. Don't don't sell th something if they don't want it. Mm. Don't do that. Don't be that scammy, a car sales guy. Right. If that makes sense. So follow my social media. Learn before you buy any of my stuff. Learn. If that makes sense. Final question. Yes, sir. What do you really want to get out of the Alex Ramosi Sam Alvin's mastermind tomorrow? The most th the, the thing that I'm having the problem with the most right now is probably hiring mm -hmm. and scaling and finding talent, like really, really finding talent. I want to be able to find the best of the best and I'm willing to overpay for it because I don't want to do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And they're going to do it for me, right? So Alex Ramosi says it all the time and I get it. Like the end game is, is finding the best talent. That's the end game. Because once you understand, once you crunch the numbers, once you have the product, once you have the product with the multiples and income, then it's at that point, can you get the best talent in the world? Right. And it's literally, that's the, that's the end game. So I want us to get started on that now. Like right now, I want to I learn this system. So I'm going to get very detailed with Alex and ask him those types of questions. Dude, appreciate you. Thank you so much, man. I have but, a question for you. Yeah, of course. Before we end it, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. What's your one thing? What do you like to do the most? What's your purpose? This. Podcasting? Yeah, yeah. I, I see it, bro. You're good at what a you do. A thousand percent. <laughs> so my, my one thing is to share the story of people who have a story that can change the world. 
Sounds good to me. And I think every school community owner that I have the chance to sit down and talk to, they've done the hard yards. They've gone on that hero's journey. They've gone on the entrepreneurial journey. For you, it's crypto. For someone else, it's barbering. Yeah. And the gold that they've learned there is valuable to the rest of the world. Like people who watch this and they want to become financially free through crypto, they're going to come to you. People who watch Hakeem's interview and they want to become financially free through barbering, they're going to go that way. And so the more of that gold we can disseminate through the world using the leverage of podcasts and, and media, then that's my end game. I love it, man. You're like a you're a servant. You're a servant at heart. That's good. Our One of our core values is to set the stage for other people to thrive. Wow. That's what we do. It says in the Bible, the greatest among us will be servants. You know that, right? Woo! <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You're doing it right, man. I love that. That's awesome. Good. Thanks for your time. Yes, sir.